Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Uh, I'm going to show you today the procedure for a modern screen replacement on... This is a basic HP laptop. To be precise, this is a HP... Uh, it's a 15S-FQ series. So this is very representative of common stuff you'll find around. The 14-inch versions of these laptops are very common as well. But just most laptops, 15-inch and 14-inch, non-touch, will probably have something like this on it. You can see this one's got a big old ding in the top there. Um, so uh, if, you, if you're working on a laptop that has um, a touch screen, you might encounter more complications. And those kind of require their own separate videos in a way. So I'm just going to cover just the basic procedure here. So let's get to it. Um, the first thing that we are going to need to do is we're going to take the display assembly off so we can disassemble it properly. Uh, now, in older videos and just in the past, I've often been a big proponent of just replacing screens in situ just by taking off the display bezel and just doing it on the laptop. And there are still some laptops where you can get away with this. However, uh, for this, because this is a how-to video, we're going to go belt and braces. There are some pitfalls involved. First of which is we need to disconnect the battery before we do anything with a display panel because the backlight power line on a lot of laptops is what's called an always hot line. That means as long as the battery or the charger is connected, there is voltage from the battery or the charger going to the backlight panel, uh, the backlight in the display panel. And when you disconnect the back the screen, if you don't pull out that connector perfectly straight, you will short that voltage to ground and probably blow the backlight fuse or worse. Um, now in the old days, you used to be able to replace panels in situ really easily, but also in the old days, you could just take the battery out the bottom of the laptop. Uh, so these days though, because you've got to disconnect the battery, you've got to take the back panel off, you may as well just take the display assembly off while you're at it and do the job properly. So that's what we're going to do here. So for this laptop, we need to take the bottom panel off to get started. Being a modern HP, um, a lot of the screws on this are hidden. There's screws underneath this rubber strip here and this rubber strip here. So what I'm going to do is get a prying tool and I'm just going to pry up the end of these rubber strips. Just get under there and I'm going to get all the way under the um, adhesive as well. If the rubber comes off leaving the adhesive in, just dig under that too. So we're going to dig all the way under there and then just very carefully peel this back. And I'm just going to go a little bit at a time, keeping my fingers close. If we go slowly and carefully, then it will come off nice and cleanly. If you try and go too fast or too suddenly, you will just snap this in half. Which isn't the worst case, you can still stick it on, but obviously it's not very pretty after that. So just very slowly pick that off. Don't try and do a big peel because you'll stretch it. There we go, and that's off. And I'm just going to put that down there just to keep it safe and keep the adhesive flat on something. And I'll do the same thing for this one. So I'm not going to lie, I had taken these off before I started recording because I was going to do this without a video and then I changed my mind. So that one came off very easily because I had just previously taken it off. So now we've exposed that, you can see we've got more screws under each of these strips. So I'm now just going to buzz out all of these screws. These are just um, uh, these are just uh, Phillips number one or Phillips zero, I believe. Easy enough to do. Some laptops you might have to deal with um, uh, Torx heads, which will be T5 or T6. Right, and now those are out. This bottom panel is ready to come off. So we need to do a little bit of prying. So I'm going to take the laptop up on its side. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dig in, in along this line here between the top case and the bottom case. And I'm just going to pop that bottom case off like that. Just going to go very carefully and just, just the slightest little pry is all we need. We don't need to graunch it. Just need to slide in a prying tool and just pop the clip out like that. So I'm going to go all the way around the laptop doing that just to loosen it off. There 
There we go. I haven't gone along this back bit. Some, most of the time you don't have to, so we'll find out. Usually if you've gone around the rest of the case, then you don't need to do the back. It will just let go. However, if it starts fighting me, I might have to just get the prying tool in under there and just give it a little bit of help. I'm just going to give that a bit of a shake. Just gently see if that wants to go. Let's try a bit of side to side. The middle is holding on, so I'm just going to try going around to different angles and see if it wants to go. We've got the back, just the center now. Oh, there it goes. And we've just got that to release. So just some clips in the middle there that we're holding on. All right. Very basic on the inside, these laptops. This laptop is actually incredibly new. I would wager this thing is less than a year old, actually, which is a shame for the owner. Uh, as you can see, it's pristine inside. Um, fair enough. If you're doing, if you're working on your own laptop, now is a really good time to put in some extra memory. This one only has four gigabytes, which is not enough these days. Eight gigs should be standard, but yeah. So first things first, let's get that battery disconnected. So we've got a couple of screws around the battery to take out. So I'll remove those. Some laptops, there might be a little bit, a little cable that you can disconnect and you may not need to remove the battery entirely. Um, you've just got to have a look and make sense of it, really. With those screws removed now, I can just lift the whole thing out. There we go. And the battery is disconnected. We can put that to one side. So now it's safe to start pulling out cables. So uh, I'll start by disconnecting the display cable, which is here. So this is a zero insertion force, Z, uh, ZIF, ZIF connector. So I'll just flip the locking bar on that open, and then I can just remove the display cable like that. So that's our display disconnected. I'm just going to route that around here. So that goes back to the hinge now. And we also need to disconnect the Wi-Fi antenna down here as well. So I'll just pop that guy out and take it out of its cable tidy. And now we'll undo the screws for the display assembly. And we'll open these just by bending them upwards. This one's got a lot of space for me to get my finger in there and lift it up. Um, if you can't get your finger around there because there's not enough room, you can get a, uh, a scrappy screwdriver. Ah, like this one. And I'm just going to gently get in through that screw hole and just lever up the hinge. No, I can't get in there. Okay, what about there? Ugh. That one doesn't want to go either. This one's going to fight me. Oh, it's going under the board. Right, this side, however, it looks like it's going underneath the board or the Wi-Fi card, so it's going to give me a bit of trouble. I'll take out this Wi-Fi card because it looks like that is blocking. There we go, there's another screw there. Good, that wasn't so bad. If you're really unfortunate, you might find that you actually have to remove the motherboard to do this. And at that point, I would be very seriously considering replacing the display in situ. However, that's going outside the scope of this how-to video. There we go. That's that guy open. And so I should now just be able to lift all of this out. And now I can just lift the body away from the laptop and put that to one side. Now we've got a display assembly, we've got something that's a lot easier to work on. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start pulling the bezel off. So the bezel is clipped in around the edges, and those clips are quite easy to pop out like we did with the laptop case. However, on HPs, they often have double-sided tape around the insides holding the bezel against the screen, and that is going to give you a lot of trouble. So what I'm going to do is release those clips and then work on that double-sided tape. So again, I'm going to take my prime tool and just gently ease in in the gap here. Let's give you guys a look at that. I'm just going to move along and just find those clips. There we 
we go. We're not getting a lot of satisfying clicks here, but you can see I'm making, I'm creating a gap. And that's the objective is just to make a gap just so we can see that it's released. And I'm going to be a little bit careful around the webcam area here, just so I don't dig in and damage the webcam. I have a suspicion we need to remove this hinge cover on this particular display assembly as well. Sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. I think this is going to be a case of do. So I'll wait for the last minute on that just to see if I actually have to though. I don't like removing these covers if I don't have to because uh, these guys, it's very easy to break clips on them. So I try to wait and see if I absolutely have to take them off. So now we've released the bezel. I'm just going to go along and just see if that wants to unpeel from the display and uh, we've got a little bit of we've got a little bit that's come up here, but not really enough. If I'm not careful here, that will just snap in the blink of an eye. It happens very quickly and very unexpectedly. So I'm going to be very slow and careful here. I'm going to switch over to um, I'm going to switch over to this tool. I don't know what you call this. Um, it's a very very thin slice of metal. You can get these in metal or plastic, and these are used for cutting through double sided tape. So I'm going to use this just to run around the edges of the screen. So this you run quite a high risk of damaging the LCD, but of course, because the LCD is already broken, we don't need to worry about that. So I can be fairly vicious here. My objective is just to cut through that tape at any cost. Okay, we're starting to get to the point where I'm trying to pop the bezel off now. I think we're almost there. I'm still not sure if this clutch cover is coming off or not. I'm just waiting to see because it looks like the black is going to come out from under here. Right, and on closer inspection you can see that the black bezel is connected to this cover strip. So that definitely needs to come out. So. I'm going to go along the bottom now and just make sure that that's ready to go. So again, I'm going to be quite careful here and just very gently have a feel. That doesn't feel right. Let's try going inwards instead. Yeah, that's working. So there's two ways of prying plastic or two directions we could be going in here. If I pry if I pry down like this, it's pulling out this top section. I'm prying like that and so I'm pulling it outwards. And if I go in and I bend the pry tool up, what I'm doing is I'm going like that and that it's going to lift this up and then it's going to press it in. So if the if the hook on the inside is like that, it's going to push it away. Whereas if I'm here and I swing down, then that is aiming to get a hook that's in that direction to come out. So you have to just gently, you've got to gently pry in each direction, just see if you can feel out what direction the hook is going in. And when you figure out which direction it wants to move in and just give it the slightest encouragement, it'll just pop open. There we go. So just immediately now that has just come off with no drama and no broken clips. These are really easy to break, so you have to be very careful with them. Right, so now that's removed, I think we're good to go. So I'm just going to see if I can just pull this out now. 
I'm just going to very gently pull up. And again, we've got to go slow and gentle with this. Because one false move and it will just snap. They're very brittle. You can find replacement bezels on eBay for 10 to 20 pounds. So it's not the end of the world if you do break one. Um, however, if you're trying to do a repair and you're trying to be competitive on your pricing, you really don't want a broken bezel on your hands. That's going to eat into your profit considerably. There we go. That's off. So we can see that in a couple of places I've eaten into the plastic wrap around the LCD. So if you're being really careful, it's more than possible to open these up without damaging the LCD if you need to, say, replace a display cable or work on the webcam or something like that. Um, however, uh, when I've got a broken LCD, I don't bother being careful about the LCD because it's going to go in the bin, so it doesn't matter. Uh, right, so... Next, we need to get this LCD out. Now, this one, of course, in the demo video, it's given me a taped one. So there's two common variations you're going to see on modern laptops. The first variation will have brackets on it, and the LCD panel itself will have four screws in each of the corners holding it in place. This one is held in with double-sided tape. So the giveaway is that Firstly, there are no screws up here. These screws here go to the strut bars going all the way down the side to the hinge. Um, and the other giveaways, you can actually see the top of the tape there. This is called stretch release tape. Now, in some laptops, this stuff is nightmarish and requires the use of alcohol and pry tools to rip out, and it's a nightmare. Most of the modern ones, though, it's called stretch release tape because you can just pull on it, stretch it out, and it will just let go. It's magic. Uh, I'm actually on the lookout for a supply of this stuff. I can't find good replacements for it. More on that in a bit, but whatever. So on this one, we've got a little bit poking out the tops, and there's some poking out the bottom as well. Some laptops, you'll only have it poking out the bottom, so you may need to undo these screws in order to get to the pull tab. Um, but on my one, I've got a little bit at the top, so I'm going to grab a pair of pliers now, and I'm just going to rip that stuff out. So I'm just going to carefully get these pliers in. You might be able to do it with tweezers, but I'll be impressed. Get a hold of that and just start stretching it up. There we go. I've got a, I've got a grip on that. So now I'm just going to start pulling. And as you can see, it just keeps going. Oh, until it snaps. Right, okay. No, oh heck. Right. What I was about to say is, don't let it stretch too far. You need to get a hold of the bottom and pick it up. If you don't, that happens. And as you can see, I've lost my bit to hold on to. So I'm actually going to move and try from the bottom now. That's actually my best option at this point. That was careless of me. However, I wanted to demonstrate the fact that this stuff stretches like it's Play-Doh. It's crazy. Right, I'm just going to gently maneuver this strut bar out. These strut bars are um, very, very delicate. You think you look at that and you're like, oh, that's a reinforcement support bar. I don't even know why these things are in here. They are so weak. They're like paper clips. Like, if I just pull that up now, it will just bend and snap. It's, it's dumb and stupid, but yeah. I don't want this video to be a rant about modern laptops. There we go. I've just eased this up a bit so I can gently move it out of the way and get a hold of that pull tab now. In a way, this is a blessing in disguise because I can show you how to get to the tab if it's at the bottom. Right, let's get a hold of that. Out it comes. Now this time, I'm going to keep grabbing hold of the base as I pull and try not to damage this. So it's difficult to show you guys what I'm doing, but as you can see, I'm just pulling that out and it will just keep going until the whole thing comes out.
There we go. Now we've got this much out, we're home dry. There we go. And that is our tape. And it just feels like weird rubber stuff now. Okay, that's one side. Let's get the other side and not make a hash up of this one. I suppose the obvious question now is, what if you mess up both ends of it? Well, if you mess up both ends, you need to use a prying tool, pr probably quite a vicious one like this metal one that I use. Um, you need to use a prying tool and some isopropyl alcohol, and you need to pry up, get alcohol under there, and just get your prying tool under and just scrape and nadger and get one of these in there and cut along and get that out. And usually it involves just essentially just ripping the old LCD out um, in a curled, horrible, broken, shattered mess. Very, very unpleasant to do. So try not to get stuck into the position where you have to do that. But it can be done. There we go. So now the LCD is not held in and I can just lift it out like that. And I'm going to flip that over and just uncover the display connector. And now we've got to disconnect it. So you'll see all kinds of covers over this bit, some kind of plastic or uh, sticker covers. So we're just going to peel this back. Even though the screen is busted and getting thrown out, we're still going to be careful here because if we're not careful, we might damage the display cable. So I'm just going to ease that out and just remove that. And so on this one, we have a locking connector. As you can see, there's a bar that I'm just flipping open there. Now that bar is open, you can just unplug that, and then we go. Right, now we have our LCD panel removed, so we need a new one of these. So this one is an Inerlux panel. It has a 30-pin connector on it. The two common types are 30-pin and 40-pin. Uh, we more or less don't see the 40-pin panels anymore. I think those are basically obsolete at the time of recording this. And 30-pin seems to be the norm. Um, so if you wanted to stock up on LCD panels, it's a pretty safe bet to have at least one of these 15.6 inch 30 pin displays on your shelf at any given time. That's pretty safe. Um, but again, there are variations. I actually don't keep L uh, laptop panels in stock because more or less every single time I think this one's common and I buy like two of them, I then don't see that panel for like six months. So I just order them on demand these days. Um, so uh, there's two ways that we can find a replacement for this. Uh, we could I'm going to search eBay for my replacement. And um, you can search eBay for the model number of the laptop and LCD. However, I find that searching for the model number of this exact panel is usually a better option because the same laptop might exist with different panels in it. There might be... A, um, there might be a 1080p version and a uh, 12, uh, 1280 by 768 or whatever. It is. No, 1366 by 768. So there might be a 768p and a 1080p version of the laptop. Or there may also be the touch and non-touch version. So searching for the laptop model number, not necessarily the best way to do it. But if you search for the panel model number, you'll be looking for this exact panel or compatible ones. So let's hit eBay and see what we can find. Now there are lots of um, there are lots of suppliers that you can buy panels directly from, and if you are replacing several laptop screens a day, that would probably be better off. Um, I've consistently found uh, every every now and then I get emails and messages from panel suppliers saying order us from us directly and save money. However, every single time I do that. By the time they've added their delivery on, I seem to be paying more. Uh, I think they only really work out if you're ordering in high volume or if you're VAT registered. And I am neither of those things. So I just buy from eBay because then you've got all of the eBay protections and the convenience. So do, which, do whichever you prefer. 
Um, but again, also, like if you guys know of good LCD panel suppliers, by all means, um, share, share names for people down in the comments below and help someone out who's looking for a place to buy their panel from. Especially if you're in like non-Western countries, because like for me in the UK or for people in the US, eBay is a really good place to get a lot of spare parts from. But also I know people who are in, you know, either Europe or Middle East or um, Asia where eBay isn't really a viable option. And I don't know where to buy stuff from if you're out there, if I'm honest. So by all means, share your share your knowledge in the comments. So um, I'm going to start by searching for the model number here. So this is an N156, so that's 15.6, HGA-EA3. And it's a Rev C3. So I can see that eBay is trying to autocomplete to Rev C1. I'm just going to do EA3 just to give myself the most options. So straight away, we've got top hits for these. Uh, and the prices are fairly consistent. At the time of recording this, about £56. That's roughly what I'd expect to pay for these LCD panels. Convert to your local currency as appropriate. Um, but there are a few things that we need to pay attention to. Firstly, again, that one's saying Rev C1. I don't know if there are differences in the revisions. So we need to have a look to see if we can figure that out. Um, the other thing as well is this one is specifically saying non-IPS. And that might imply the existence of an IPS version. I'm not sure if this is an IPS panel or not. If it is, I definitely want to replace it with another IPS panel. Because IPS panels are drastically better quality than non-IPS. And if your customer is accustomed to an IPS panel and you drop in some cheap non-IPS thing, they're going to be on your doorstep next week going, oh, you put a new display in here and it's rubbish. So pay attention to this. If you're trying to grind the cost down, you could probably save some money. However, if it's got an IPS panel in it, personally, I'd make sure you replace it with another IPS. Um, likewise, I'd also try to pay attention to whether it's a glossy or a matte panel as well, because then you can put in something that the customer is familiar with. Um, you may even want to, you could even offer the customer a glossy or matte panel if, if they mentioned it, but most of the time people don't care in my experience. So second hit down, we've got a compatible one here. It's a Chai Mei, and it's compatible with the inner Lux that we put in, and it's compatible with the Rev C3. So this one looks like a winner to me, uh, full HD LED matte. So that is definitely a good contender. Um, and also we can see from the picture, it does not have the brackets on it, which means it's going to drop into this one successfully. So uh, let's keep checking, because I want to know if this is an IPS or not. I might actually just do a Google search for this to find out if it's supposed to be, because I genuinely don't know. All right, so I've just done a Google search for um, N156 HGA EA3 Rev3 data sheet. And the top hit for that has come up with this panellook.com website. And if we go to that hit, uh, we've actually got all of the tech specs of this panel, which is really handy. So firstly, I can confirm here it's not an IPS panel. So we don't need to worry about this being an IPS. Uh, I would have been very surprised if it had been, to be honest, especially on a laptop of this caliber. IPS is usually something you'll see on higher end laptops. But as I mentioned, you should be looking out for it because if the customer already has an IPS panel, you don't want to downgrade them. Um, so uh, likewise, if, the, uh, if they have a 1080p panel, you don't want to downgrade them to a 768p panel. So likewise, we can confirm here that it is indeed 1080p panel, no problem. Um, and the other thing of interest here is this one actually tells us what the different revisions mean. So um, Rev C1 with up down slugs. So that means the C1 version of this will come with the brackets for screw hole fittings. Whereas Rev C2, 3 and 4 do not come with those as standard. So this confirms to us what the different revisions mean as well. So I don't always look up all of this information, but this goes to show that if you're not sure if you're getting the right panel or not, you can find this information quite easily and confirm that you're buying the correct panel. So that being the case, this Chime one that we found here, this is probably a perfectly good replacement and will be absolutely fine. However, as an interest check, I'm going to see if I can actually find an original Inalux and just see how much that would cost.
Okay, here's one that doesn't say compatible. It says replacement, that might mean compatible. So this says, if the exact part number is not in stock, we supply compatible. Product ship will be similar equivalent to the picture shown. That's reasonable, but they're not very clear on exactly what brand they're using here. And for that reason, I would skip past this advert because they're not being clear on if this is a genuine Inalux or not. Like, if you're selling a compatible screen, that's fine, but tell me it's a compatible so I know. Uh, I would be absolutely furious if I bought this thinking I'm getting an N15-6 HDA and a Chime would show up. I'd be like, no, you said it was an N15-6 HDA. So that one's that one gets a no from me. I'd rather just buy the Chime and go and know that I'm using a compatible. Ooh, hello, what are you? This one doesn't say it's an Inlux, but it does say it's an IPS panel, and it's the same price. This is perfect, because for the same price, we could potentially upgrade the customer to a better screen for the same price. Oh, there we go. This is why it's always worth having a look. Sometimes you'll look at eBay, you'll see the bit you want, you'll be like, that's it, buy, done. But if you spend five or ten minutes just scrolling through the results, you might just find something that's even better and costs the same. Uh, all right, that's our new contender. No idea what brand it is, but if that's actually an IPS, then this will knock the socks off of the existing panel that's in here. Right, I'm down to the bottom of the first page now. I don't think we're going to find an original Inalux unless we buy a second-hand one, and I think that's a very high roll of the dice, if I'm honest. But we have found an IPS replacement panel, and the price is about what I'd expected to pay. So this is the one that I'm going to buy. There we go, that's my purchase done. So now I've got to wait a couple of days for that to show up. So I'm going to put all of this to one side, and I'll see you after the cut. Right, our new panel has arrived. So this guy is ready to go in. It's got the right connector on it. That's a little bit bent. Be a bit careful with this bottom bit just to see if it bends. I have seen these show up harshly bent where it's slid in the box. Unfortunately, there's a mistake I've seen a couple of suppliers make where they've had nothing they haven't had enough in the box to prevent the panel from sliding about in the box and this bit has gotten a bit bashed up so we better watch out for that in fact I might do a test run on this before we commit to fitting it because obviously this is a panel where we're going to effectively glue it back in again so I'm gonna do a test run on this before we commit to anything um, so let's do that what I'm gonna do I'm gonna plug in the display cable and you can manhandle these a little bit, you know, I can grab your hands all around it, but I'm not holding it by this circuit board. My hand is always over the circuit board like that, you know, so I'm holding on to the panel, not this board. And when we put the connector in, I'm going to make sure that that is as in as far as it will go. I've been trolled before. A recent, actually, a recent laptop I did. I put this connector in, and it was easily in enough for the locking bar to go over in position. Um, however, the even though the locking bar was closed, the dis, the actual connector was not in properly, and the display didn't work. And uh, yeah, that, that was a bad afternoon because uh, I did, spent a lot of time thinking I had a bad backlight in there. And then it turned out that no, I just had not connected it up properly. So just make sure that connector is in as far as it will go. Right, where's the body? There it is. Uh, so where does this connect? It connects like that. So the laptop will be this way around, like that. So... Luckily, we've got quite a long display cable on this one. Um, however, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just gently lay this down here. We've still got the protective film on the LCD, so I can just gently lay the body of the laptop on top of it without any serious risk. And we'll connect that up. And now I shall flip this back over. And I'm just going to 
mount this up as such that I can plug it in and turn it on. I would consider this step to be optional and not always necessary. I generally don't bother testing unless I have a reason to test. Like in this case, that board was a little bit bent. So I'm going to test just in case. If I hadn't spotted that, I wouldn't bother doing this step. I would probably just YOLO straight in. But then on the other hand as well, given that I'm trying to do an actual tutorial here, it's good practice to test the part. I could connect the battery and test with that. However, it's easier just to plug in a charger. Right, activate. Very good. All right, that panel has come on. It's perfectly fine. We have a backlight and there's no lines or anything like that. I mean, we haven't done, uh, we could go for a full screen actually. Let's press enter to restart and I'm gonna tap the escape key. Because this is a HP, we want escape to get to the boot menu. I just wanna go into something that will give me a full screen picture. Uh, let's see, BIOS setup, that'll do. There we go, and there's our full screen picture. And as you can see, there's no lines on the display, there's no issues. That text that you can see here, uh, that is on the film that's over the top of the LCD. We'll peel that off when we're finished or when we're about to put the bezel back on. So yeah, no, no cause for concern there. Good. Let's turn this on and carry on reassembling. Right, and now I want to make sure that these strut bars at the side are in and straight and screwed into place. And I need to make sure that any wires are going through them correctly as well. And I may just refer to <clears throat> the previous footage that I'd recorded or a picture that I might have taken. That Remember I said make sure you pay attention to uh, how the wires are rooted um, because I need to see how this guy goes back into place. This The wireless antenna on the right here is pretty obvious. There's a channel that it clearly drops into. The one on the left, the display cable, I actually can't remember. Right, so now I've got my uh, hinges screwed back in, uh, we're ready to stick the new LCD in place. Now, I mentioned earlier on in the video that um, this was using stretch release tape. I have yet to find a place where you can buy a roll of this stretch release tape, or even just long lengths of it. So if anyone knows where to find it, would be very interested to know. You, I can find it in small strips for use in, on like mobile phone batteries and things like that. Never found it on big stuff for laptops. So I'm gonna use Tessa tape, uh, which is a high quality brand double-sided tape. You can use any other cut type of double-sided tape if you want. It's just got to be nice and thin. The thinner, the better. So let me just grab my roll of that. Now, the downside of this stuff is that it is not stretch release. It's not going to want to come off again afterwards. So I'm going to use it very sparingly, just so if there is the chance that this LCD needs to be replaced again at some point in the laptop's lifetime, we don't completely dick over whichever poor sod has to take this one out. Um, so what I do, we have to consider the fact that with the bezel on there as well, as long as we have some tape holding this thing in, it's not gonna fall out, you know? So I'm not gonna do full length strips down each side. I'm just gonna put a little bit on each corner so the LCD is firmly in place, but it is possible to actually remove it if you're trying. So I'm gonna take off, I don't know, inch, inch and a half, and put it in each corner on the back of the LCD. And I'm placing it on the metal sections here um, we don't want to place any of it on the white plastic area uh, because otherwise that might damage the LCD or it'll put undue strain in those areas. So apply it to the back of the panel first, not to the back of the display assembly because this is where you want to be careful of the positioning. There we go, and I'll just peel off the backing for that. There we go, and now we're going to line that up. And I'm just gonna hold the panel up and I'm just gonna tuck it into these corners over here, make sure it's nice and centered. And I'm just gonna gently just make sure this strut bar is out of the way as I drop it in. 
and that's it. That's in place. And not pushing it down or anything yet. I'm just having a look, just so before I sort of go hmm on it, we know that there's no problems there. Okay, I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to right at the edges of the screen. I'm not going to, I'm just going to press on it. I'm not applying any meaningful pressure. I'm just ensuring that the tape has contacted the back, basically. And that is all we need. That's all we need to do. And before we put this guy on, I'm going to peel off this front backing. Now, take this off gently. I'm just going to come across. We're not going to go rip. We're not going to go all glorious or anything. Just going to very slowly just pull that back. And the reason why we go gently on these is I've never ruined a screen by removing the cellophane. However, there are some screens... Ah. Ooh, this one smells odd. There are some screens where after removing it, the screen has gone very white and washed out. Um, and it came good again after five or ten minutes. After five, ten, well, five or ten minutes... But it almost looked for a moment like I'd partially delaminated the inner layers of the screen while pulling off the um, uh, the cellophane. So I don't think you can damage them, but I live in fear of it. So just be gentle with it is what I'm saying. Um, don't go for a glorious rah or anything like that. Ask him for trouble. So we'll just position up this bezel and then... When I'm happy that that's in place, we'll make sure that the cables aren't trapped and those are sitting nice. And we should just be able to start clicking this guy into place. Most of the glue um, that was most of the glue for the bezel is destroyed. You could put on some new tape if you wanted. Personally, I don't think it's necessary, and I don't like the way that these are glued on. And I've just gone around the first time, and now we'll just go around and check our lines. Those look nice. No gaps. And if we find any gaps, don't worry, we'll just give it a poke and just look for more clicks. And just go round and round until everything looks good. Sometimes it won't go in first time, and you need to go around and click it in somewhere else, and then it'll settle and all the rest of it. However, that looks like that's gone on quite nicely. So... We just need the hinge cover now, or the clutch cover. And that is going to go on. So the this these are often that shape. Uh, so the flat side usually goes at the bottom with the rounded side toward the screen. So uh, let's see. Let's open up those hinges a bit further. And we're just going to ease, ease this around the cables. When you're struggling to put these bits on, usually it's because you haven't cleared the cables or the hinges properly. So let me see if I can give you an angle on this. So what I'm doing now is I've just got to work... Uh, I've just got to work this hook here around the hinge and the cables so it sits down at the bottom. And I've got to do that on the whole length at the same time. So, okay, that looks roughly okay. Now this end, that's not, that cable is not in properly. Let's just ease that around. There we go, that's looking promising. <clears throat> and now again, we just want to click this guy in and we need to just go slowly and carefully to make sure that clips are lining up because if you press these in, you'll just start snapping clips. So you need to actually make sure that the clips are aligning and not just bending. There we go. That one's gone on. It's quite common for these to not feel very satisfying when they go on. Like this, it gave a couple of clicks, but it didn't give a nice firm click in and into place. It's just gone on and now it doesn't come off again. I'm like... Okay, I guess that's done now. The important thing is, is that it's not falling off. And, you know, I can pick that up and wobble the screen now. That's that's not coming off on its own, you know. That's what we want. Because if you, can, if you do that and it comes off in your hand, it's definitely going to come off when the customer starts opening and closing the lid. 
And if you break a load of clips along there, then you will have trouble getting it to stay on. You can use, and I have used in the past, some very tactical, just tiny little drops of just super glue, just some liquid super glue. I always keep a bottle of this on the table, and if I've got some bad clips that have all snapped, because sometimes they do that, um, you just put just a tiny little bit of glue just on each clip, and you just click over the top, and that will just bite and hold it in place. And again, that's not, we haven't, you don't put a whole line along the whole thing because you'll just make a mess every way. Just put little dabs just on the inside edges for it to hold on to. And that will give you a nice clean finish that is completely invisible. That is a last resort if it's fallen apart in your hands. And that often happens on older laptops where the plastics are old and giving up. This laptop is very modern. Um, so uh, yeah, no, no concerns there. Right, we have a rebuilt display assembly, so let's put it back onto the laptop. And we'll pull the camera back and hang it all across the edge. Right, that side looks good. I'll drop a screw in there just to stop it jumping out. And now this side. Okay, and don't try and bend the display with only one screw holding things in. That is how you break hinges. I'm just putting these in just so the thing can't drop out at the moment. And that means that I can now just put this Wi-Fi card back in. I've actually got a hinge screw underneath there, so let's drop that guy into place. So when we're putting in the hinge screws, um, you will find that there are arrows pointing to them. So you can see here, we've got an arrow here pointing at this hole. There's an arrow there pointing at that hole. However, this hole here does not have an arrow pointing to it. That means that this, this hole stays empty and there's a screw coming down through the case for that one. So take a close look so you know which screws are supposed to have, wait, which holes are supposed to have screws. And also, all of these hinge screws, just give them just a little bit more bite than you would a normal screw. Take them down until you feel the screw thread start biting in and then just go, oop, just a little bit. Because these guys, if they come loose, then your hinges break. So you kind of actually want these to be a little bit tight. Lots of people will also say, oh, you've got to put Loctite on those. Honestly, I've never done that. And it's never been a problem for me, but I certainly can't see the harm in it. So if you wanted to put just a little bit of Loctite on there, I don't think that's a bad idea. Now we've got those hinge screws in, I can actually close the laptop up. Again, I'm still pressing from the bottom here, just because until we've got the back cover on and the screws in, we don't have full structural rigidity of the laptop. And now it's all closed up, it's a bit easier just to stick all of this stuff back in. Right, I think everything is plugged in now, so we're ready for the battery and the back cover. Excellent, right, our back cover is going on. So when we put the back cover on, we just have a quick look at the ports on each side just to check if we need to hook over anything. There's nothing that sticks out on this laptop, so all of those are just sliding into place. Sometimes you might need to hook over some of the ports, so you might need to come in a big angle like this, hook over the ports, and then swing it down. But have a look, have a feel, see what you think is necessary, and then we're just going to go around and just get all the clicks. And in go the back screws. That's fitted in quite nicely. If you find that it has stretched a little bit, which is normal for when you pull them off, they tend to stretch a little bit. If you 
keep a middle bit lifted up and just tuck in both ends and you can usually just sort of compress it all into the channel. We might find that that happens on this, uh, on the larger back one. Let's bring that guy back up, tuck that in, into the channel. No, no stretching here either. Again, if you've got, if it's suddenly gone a little bit too long, just tuck in the end and just press the excess back it backwards from the start point and just compress it in there and it will just all push back in. That's happened to me many times and it's all gone back in and been perfectly fine. There we go. Okay, I've got a black screen now. We had that CMOS checksum message. The laptop has started up because we've got a power light and a flashing hard drive light or SSD light, but I've got no picture. Now is not the time to be doing BIOS updates. Okay, this is okay. It looks like the, the Windows was in the midst of doing Windows updates here. So um, we've had a little bit of strange behavior where Windows was in the middle of trying to do something and then we came stomping in and started changing out displays and things like that. So a couple of restarts later and it looks like this thing will be absolutely fine. So yeah, if you're getting no picture or something like that, don't panic. Um, a couple of reboots and it'll probably be all right. If you had a BIOS screen, then almost certainly any other issues, there we go. If you had a BIOS screen, then almost certainly 100% any other issues you've got are going to be software related. Right, that is now working. And while we're here, as you can see, that is very much an IPS panel because we can go all the way to the side there and still be able to see it. And vertically, that's pretty impressive as well. The stock screen would not have those kind of viewing angles. So that actually looks pretty good to me. Amidst my camera doing some flashing issues. Please ignore that. Good. Right. That's it. We're all finished. So thank you very much for watching, everyone. Um, I hope that was informative and interesting. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.